Okay, this video is to help you guys figure out how you can use Essential Elements Interactive to help you practice and to send me audio recordings if you are interested in doing that to get some feedback or to show off. Um, this is for after you've already, like this is once you've logged in. So you need to already have gone in and entered the class code and the school code and created your account and then logged in. This is what you'll see, except with your name instead of test. Um, but this is what it should look like. So the main place you're going to be spending time will probably be up here in the upper right corner, Music Studio. If you click this button, that's where you're going to end up spending, spending most of your time. So once you get here, it'll default to view song list until you start opening things, which I had been doing already, but it'll default to view song list. Now I'm logged in. My test account is a sixth grader, so I have book one. If you're a seventh grader doing this, yours will say book two, and it will have all of your book two music. Um, but again, this is a sixth grade account technically. So... Um, so this is all of your music, everything in book one right here, six pages of songs. Um, so let's say you want to practice and you don't know how something is supposed to go, uh, or you just want to practice with some background music. You can just pick any of these. They're all in your book and you're good to go. I'm going to click hot cross buns to start. So it'll open this up. This should look very familiar. It should look exactly how it would in your book, including all of the little notes and details. If there's anything special about a song, it will have that included. Okay, first things first, to make sure it's on the right instrument. My, uh, You should have your instrument already chosen for you because I had to enter that when I created your student IDs. If not, or if it's wrong, you can just pick your instrument out of the drop-down box. Um, and then this accompaniment will default to metronome. That's just going to be the background noise you hear. I'll keep it on metronome for the first time through so you can hear what that is, and then I'll show you guys uh, one of the other options as we go. So let's say you just want to listen to the song because you don't know how it's supposed to sound, or you want to play through on your own, not recording yourself, just playing along with something. All you got to do is click play. So I stopped it around here. Um, as you guys saw, it kind of told you to get ready. It gave you a four click count off and then it started playing. If you um, just you let it play all the way through the song, it would stop automatically at the end. If you wanted to maybe continue repeating the song, you could turn on this button loop and it will play all the way through and then start back at the beginning again. So if you just want to get a lot of reps in, that's how you can do that. Or if maybe it's going a little too fast for you to keep up with, you can click slow and it will slow down the recording drastically. Um, so that maybe you can have a little bit easier time following along with it and getting your fingers in the right spots. Um, if you are getting on here because you're just bored of hearing yourself play alone, you can play with different types of background music, which can kind of be interesting. So I had it on metronome, which is the default, which is just those clicks keeping time. But you can put on a different type of thing. Let's say we want to do country. No, let's do dance. Um, if I put the accompaniment on dance and I hit play, it's going to just play some different background music instead of a metronome. It'll still give us our prep and our count off, though. Okay, um, so obviously there's lots of different choices for background music. You can also just turn it off completely if you just want to hear the clarinet part. Or if you don't want to hear the clarinet part at all, you want to play it on your own and just have background music, you can uncheck melody. And then if I were to hit play right now, we just would hear that background dance music. We wouldn't hear this part. Um, if you're trying to listen to it so you can follow along with it or hear how it's supposed to sound, though, you're going to want to keep that clicked. Um, so that's how you can just practice with it, play it, listen to it, whatever. If you want to record yourself so you can either save the sound recording for yourself so you can track your own progress, or maybe you want to record it and send it to me because you are doing a really good job and you want me to be excited with you, I will be. Or maybe you are struggling with something and you want to send it to me to maybe get some feedback and some help. Uh, you can record yourself. So before you record yourself, I'm not going to do it right now because I'm not using an instrument, but you'll want to come up here to this upper right corner, uh, this bullseye and click calibrate so that it will calibrate your microphone um, before you start to basically to make sure the microphone is working. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. And then you click record. So I'm going to be singing because I don't have um, my instrument with me set up. So just bear with me, but um, I'll sing along so you guys can see how the recording section works. enough of 
that. So as you can see, I just did my recording. It pops up down here, hot cross buns, accompaniment with metronome, which is wrong. Take one, um, and then you can save it or you can listen back to it. I don't know if you guys can hear, but there's a slight delay. That's because I'm not using headphones. If you were to wear headphones and listen to this stuff through your headphones, um, you would not have that. It's just because it's picking up the recorded recording, if that makes sense. Um, so I would recommend using headphones while you're actually playing um, if you don't want that little delay. Um, otherwise, let's say you're happy with your recording and you want to show me how good you did. You can click Save Take One. And it will save it. And then you are good to go. You can continue practicing. You can move on to another song. You can record it again if you want. Uh, lots of options there. Let's say also that you are uh, you recorded yourself and you want to listen to it and you want to adjust the volume levels. Um, you can do that here. Like this microphone is you and then the speaker is the computer. So you can mess with that if you like want to hear yourself a little less uh, or hear the you know accompaniment a little less. But that's what that's for. So that's pretty much all there is to it in terms of playing the music to listen to it and then recording the music to record yourself. It's a lot more basic of a user interface than smart music. Unfortunately, it's also a little bit more limited in what you can do, but if you're looking for just something super simple and basic to practice with out of your books, this is kind of the easiest way to do it. So we've seen View Song List, we've seen EE Music. Now let's say you want to play a song that isn't out of your book, but you want to send me a recording of it. Um, that's where you would go to All Music, which will pull up this page. Um, here you can record anything. Uh, it doesn't have to be out of the book. It won't show you any music because you're not recording out of the book. Um, but if you have your own sheet music, maybe from stuff I've given you, or if you taught yourself another song, or you just you know want to play a scale, it doesn't really matter. If it's anything else, you can. it's the same procedure. You can record yourself here. You can turn on a metronome to follow you at whatever tempo you'd like. Um, of course, you, you can't play it back if you haven't done anything. But if I record myself and then press play, you can listen to it, and it will give you the same options to save your recordings, um, all that good stuff. So this is just to use for non-book music that you want to send me specifically. I would recommend smart music if you just want to practice non-book music because it will give you some feedback and show you the music. But if you want to send me a recording or save your own recording of anything that isn't out of the book, this is a super easy way to do it, is to record it here and then send it to me through here. Okay, so again, EE music is book music. All music is other music. View song list is how you can pick from all your book songs. Uh, fingering charts is just like in the back of your book, the whole the fingering chart, exactly like in the back of your book. Um, saved recordings. So I just recorded Hot Cross Buns, right? Um, it's If you look up here under my recordings, I'm under EE Music because that's where I just saved something. It tells you when you recorded it, what accompaniment you had. You can listen to it again if you want. Uh, you can download it if you'd like to save it for yourself. But let's say you want to turn it into me because you want to tell me how well you did. You you can First of all, you can just hit submit and it will send it to me. But let's say you want to leave a comment. You can click my comments and type whatever you want. And click save. That's also where if you have a question like, I did really well, but I don't understand measure two. I didn't know what I did wrong. That's where you can type that stuff in. Uh, once you're done with that, you can click submit and it will say submitted. Uh, and then on my end as the teacher, I'll get a notification that you submitted something and I can listen to the recording and read your comments and I can send you comments back saying like, hey, you did really well or, oh, it sounds like you're not breathing where you're supposed to be in measure two. Maybe that'll help. Something like that. Okay. If you saved a recording of all music, like not a book song, it's under this tab, which I did a test of earlier. Um, I've already like done the test of all of that stuff. Um, uh, you can delete it if you want. You can't undo it, though. I just checked that. But um, anyway, so yeah, recorded, recorded music from the book, recorded music not from the book. Archived recordings would be if you do delete anything, that's where it would go. Um, so yeah, we've gone over all these. Okay, and then let's, so again, this is a sixth grade account. If you are a sixth grader, we used book one this year. We will use book two in seventh grade. If you're a seventh grader, you're already in book two, but you may still have your book one from last year. If you... Uh, you know, whether you're a sixth grader, maybe you're, you're like feeling confident in book one. So you go ahead and order book two to start working ahead. Or maybe you're a seventh grader and you want to go back and review some stuff from way early in beginning band. You can activate the book that you, the other book that you're not already in 
by coming here to the, you know, whatever book. This one says book two or three. If you're a seventh grader, it'll say book one or three. You click whatever book you're wanting to activate and you enter your activation code just like you did when you created your account to begin with. Um, and then you would hit continue and it would log you in. And then when you go to view song list, you'll have two tabs, book one and book two. Um, don't worry about book three. Don't Please don't buy book three. It is a waste. We will never use it. Um, but yeah, so if you want to add book two because you're feeling you know confident and sort of start working ahead or you know seventh graders, if you want to go back and add book one as well, you can do that there. And then you'll have two tabs up here, book one and book two, and you can click through any of those songs. Okay, so that's how you guys can use this to listen to and practice along with any songs out of your book, how you can record yourselves and send the recordings to me, uh, practicing any song out of your book or any music at all. Um, there are a couple other tools on this website that uh, I don't foresee us using too much, but I will show you what they are just in case you're curious. Um, this button up here next to Music Studio is resources. I will be uploading some things here. Um, there's nothing there now because I haven't put anything there, but once I upload things, I'll be uploading some actually both videos, PDF, all of them, uh, all three video, PDF, and links. Uh, just anything I think you guys might find interesting, I'll store them here so you guys can log in to EEI and get access to all of that in one place. Um, and then the calendar, that's all this is, by the way, resources. And then calendar, we won't really use too much. This could be where I would put in like concert dates and like performances and stuff. But since we're using this because we're out of school, I don't foresee me using this feature too much. But that's what this is. Um, and then assignments is this far left button. Uh, I don't plan on creating too many assignments. I will probably create a few um, just to kind of check in and make sure everyone is doing okay. Um, you know, I love hearing you guys play and I don't get to hear that anymore. So, you know, don't be surprised if a, an assignment pops up kind of sporadically, but it won't be anything super like high stakes or whatever. I do have to create a grade through EEI for it, um, but no grades in here will go into like Lumen for school. This will just be for me to check in with you guys and you guys to get feedback from me and also just like utilize it as a practicing tool. Um, but if you did have any assignments for me, they would be under current assignments if you submit an assignment, like if I say play number 14, you would click it, you would record yourself playing it. Whenever you were happy with the recording, you'd hit submit, and then it would be in um, previous assignments, okay? Um, once I grade them, they go to graded assignments, and then you can also check your grade report for overall grades. Um, again, I'm not planning on actually following through any grades with these, so I wouldn't even really worry about these two things too much. Um, and, you know, once an assignment has passed, it's in previous. And then practice logs is one more kind of useful tool. If you want to keep track of how much you practice and what you practice, uh, this is a cool way to do it. You can enter whatever you do and save it here. I personally recommend, uh, I would say a good minimum to go for would maybe be an hour a week, which sounds like a lot. But if you think about it, that's three 20 minute practice sessions. So like if Monday, Wednesday and Friday, you can find 20 minutes to practice, you've done an hour that week. Um, or if you do 10 minutes every day, except for Saturday or something like that, like that's, that's an hour. So it, it, it goes by a lot faster than you think, or maybe just one hour long session a week, you know, whatever. But I would recommend at minimum an hour a week, uh, would be what I would personally think would be good to keep you guys up to date so that you're ready to go and we can finally play together again. Um, but yeah. And if you want to track what you're doing, you can do that here. Um, you can, of course, you, I, I don't mean you need to submit an hour of recordings a week, like an hour's worth of recordings. I just meant like as a personal goal, I would try to make yourself practice an hour a week. You can submit. I'll probably want to hear maybe like once every other week, I want to hear something from you, but I don't want this to become something super high stakes, high, you know, high stress for you guys. This is just a way for you guys to continue to improve when we can't be there in person. Um, and then, yeah, that's it on this website. There's not a lot to it. The music studio to practice with, the assignments to keep track of assignments, not really going to use the calendar too much, and then resources to find some other like non-playing related resources that I'll be posting. Uh, you can change your account details. If you like don't know how to use any of the website, they have a pretty good help section. Um, hopefully I explained pretty much everything in this video, but if not, um, but yeah, that's really all there is to it. So, um, you know, let me know if there's anything that doesn't quite make sense, but otherwise that is how you can use Essential Elements Interactive uh, to track your practicing.